Okay, hello, greetings and welcome. All right, so I keep getting a, a flow of requests for strength training, going to the gym, bodybuilding, uh, this type of work. All right, so the, the first activity which I recommend for people is a very, very simple one. And uh, it just simply uh, requires a, uh, a kettlebell. And uh, what you do is you, you start off with vital breathing. It's going to be on sitting or standing, it's up, it's up to you. Uh, and get your whole body poor breathing. So you do this from the building the ball and uh, the four cycle breath for getting the astral feeling, whether you're vital or astral, either is fine. Uh, depends how deep you want to go. Get the whole body poor breathing, get the everything active. And then if it's a kettlebell, put your thumbs around the edges. If it's like a 10 or 20, 20 kilo disc, just grab the disc on the sides. And what I want you to do is just bring it up onto the center line uh, look up to the sky so the yi rises, bring the head back down, tuck in your chin and then put your mind up and stretch your fingers upwards and vital breathe. Now what I want you to do is you stretch everything up, stretch your spine up, stretch from your toes, stretch your whole body in an upward direction and what I want you to do is just keep stretching up, up, up for one minute on the timer. Just keep power stretching. After about a minute Drop the kettlebell, let your arms go. Now my arms are floating up by themselves because of the, the kinetic load inside the tendons fascia web. And they'll rise up to a certain point, and they're still going a little bit. Now they're getting to the peak. They don't want to go any further. So that's the end of the load. They rise by themselves because when you, put, when you stretch under load, you're storing energy inside the fascia. Now they're going to be there for, you know, 10 seconds to a minute. Now they're starting to empty a little bit and they're wanting to come down. Now what I want to do is I want to breathe. Now they're starting to lower, the energy's emptied out. I breathe vital energy and I very gently inflate my arms to make my arms rise again. Now as my arms start to drop, I inflate and they rise again. So this exercise activates pure fascia. I inflate and I get a slight rise. So all I've got to do is vital breathe and inflate the balloon of my arms to push the balloon up. And it's a slight opening of the joints, but it's the life force inflating and activating the fascia that makes the rise. Then I let my arms come back down, I just watch. And as I come, come down, just let, let it drop by a few inches, inflate. So every phase is a dotted line of the path and every dot I do a slight inflation. Let it come down, inflate, vital breathe. Let it come down, inflate. So I keep doing this until my arms are back down again and then I repeat. Now once I've mastered the, the, the power stretch with the heavy weight, the kettlebell, and then the, um, uh, the inflation process, I get two plateaus, or should I say two, two measurements. The weight that I stretch under, the heavier that is, the easier it will be to inflate and activate the fascia. Once I can do it with no weight, I take a small weight, like a, um, a small one kilo disc, and, I, and then I put a small one kilo disc in each hand, and then I just practice inflating with a small one kilo disc, so that I'm floating that disc through the fascia web and it feels weightless when I lift that, that one kilo disc in each hand. So that's uh, a couple pounds. And then I increase the kettlebell weight or the disc and load, then float the arms, pick up the discs. Maybe I'll put a, a two kilo disc in each hand and then float the two kilo disc. So now I might have a 20 kilo kettlebell and a two kilo disc. Now I'm loading with the 20 kilos, then I float the two kilos. Then I load with 30 kilos and I float 3 kilos. Then I load with 40 kilos and then I float 4 kilos and so forth. Now there's a point at which um, um, you'll get to maybe 40, 50, 60 kilos of power stretch and from there you start to get this floating of the weight to put under pure fascial web and inflation. It just starts moving towards your peak weight. What I found is with a two 32 kilo kettlebells, it took me about one year to float the two 32s. Now at the time, 
I didn't, I hadn't figured this equation out that power stretch under one and then use a lighter weight for, for floating the second one. What I, what, what I was doing is um, uh, uh, doing electric magnetic firing into the air and then when they're up there I just power stretch and hold them up and, uh, and keep the power stretch there. Then I'd put the kettlebells down and then the arms would float by themselves. And uh, I kept doing that until I got to the power stretch and then the kettlebells were floating. So there were 64 kilos floating my arms after a year. It would have happened much faster and much more cleanly if I'd known this method, where you power stretch under heavy weight and you float a light weight. And about 10% seems to be the threshold for success in the early stages. And then let's say you're, you're, you're um, uh, in uh, uh, the place in Chiang Mai, we've got 40 kilo kettlebells. So uh, uh, you, you do a power stretch with two 40s and you're, you're just power stretching up. So instead of holding one, you're holding two. Then you put them down and you, you, you pick up two uh, 10, 12 kilo kettlebells and float, they just float straight up. So that, that the gap between the, the, the weight of the power stretch and the, the lower weight kettlebell, that gap gets smaller and smaller and eventually they'll match each other. So you lift up the kettlebell and just, and instead of power stretching, you just float and you're floating the heavy kettlebells. And this takes time. But this is the method I recommend for activating biotensecrity, activating the fascia, strengthening the fascia. Now, remember, fascia takes a long time to build. This is a very, very slow process. It's not like building muscle. Uh, it took me a whole year to lift up two 32 kilo kettlebells and go, oh, that's empty. It's light, it's just floating on my fascia. It's like my body's a trampoline and the, the kettlebells were just bouncing around on the trampoline and just buoyant like on a water balloon and they're comfortable. Well, my muscle wasn't dominating the activity, but my fascia was dominating the activity. So take your time with this. Now the same principle applies to normal weights. Let's say you're doing pec deck at the gym. You, 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 you have a machine, you're like this, and you they have this um, pull in and push out. So what I do on that machine is I go to the bottom pin, as heavy as I can get. I'm a big guy. And then I stretch my arms out, and I, I, I pull the energy magnetically this way. And then I, I just hold power stretch, 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 stretch inwards until I get that one minute. Then I remove and then I lie down on the ground with my arms like that and my arms just float up and I'll practice getting the buoyancy where I'm lying down and floating my arms. Now when I am comfortable with that, I do it again and then I go from the, the heaviest pin to just one disc. And then with only one disc instead of 10, 12, 15 discs, I float it in. And I just inflate vital breathe and I move my arms inwards and I can put that load. Then I go to two discs, power stretch under the whole stack, and then three discs, power stretch under the whole stack, and then float four discs and so forth. So we've got this power stretch under very heavy load and float a light load. And this you can do on every machine in the gym pretty much. You just have to figure it out. When you're on uh, free weights, it's a bit of a nuisance because you need two bars because you have to be able to switch from a full chest press bar to just the bar only or just your arms only to start with. And a bar by itself is actually quite heavy to float for, from a beginner's level. So um, you have that little threshold because a bar will weigh, what, 20 kilos. So you might have... Um, uh, a couple 20 kilo discs on it, so you've got uh, 20 kilo bar, 20 inch side, 60 kilos, and then you power stretch under load, you drop it, and then you practice floating your arms. You want to have something that's about 10%, so you want a six kilo bar. So you might switch to just having a couple small dumbbells in your hands and floating them instead of a bar until you reach bar only, which is 20 kilos. But you know, when you look at this 10% rule, that's a 200 kilo chest press. So you'll get obstacles when you're working, calculating this out on some things. Now this develops a really pure bar tensecrity activation on a whole range of exercises. And this is a really beautiful system. 
Now, when I was training this, I, I would pick up my, uh, my girlfriend and just go, Whoop, oh, and just lift her up like she's not even there. Could turn her side, left, up, down, and move her around. And it was like she, she had no weight to her. If I touch a student, whoop, they have no weight to them. That means I can, I can make my 120 kilos, wave through them, wave through the fascia, hit them, and shoot them across the room. And I would feel next to nothing because the biotensecrity was able to float so much weight without activating muscle. So what you're doing is learning how to, f to use the biotensecrity of your body to support heavy mass. This makes you really, really strong. You touch people and you'll just lift them up off the ground, not because you've got strong muscles, because you've got strong connected biotensecrity. The stretchy elastic stuff in your whole body connects to your hand and just lifts the person off the ground because you develop the biotensecrity, not the muscle. Now, this, what I'm talking about in a decade or two from now is going to be the basics of powerlifting and breaking Olympic records. And all these people who are in sports science, they're going to be studying what I am just talking about right now. This is the future of sport, building biotensecrity. This particular subject is going to have thousands of uh, uh, sports scientists researching. These people are going to take th what I've just mentioned to the next level. I'm giving you a very simple introduction based on, on my experiences from a couple of decades ago and the training I went through so I can give this training to other people and get them to develop themselves through it. So, revision. Power stretch under load. If I move, what happens? My muscles contract. I want to put the kettlebell or the weight there and stretch. So there, I'm not moving, I'm not flex, I'm going through flexion. I'm just stretching all my joints open, vital breathing, thinking up, creating big mental space, creating big feeling space, opening my joints, creating space. So that's, that's, that's rule number one. Now, one minute is enough. A beginner might only need 30 seconds. But one minute rounds, drop it, and then float your arms up. Now, you float your arms up for as long as they're going to stay there, and inflate vital energy. So it's very soft mind intent, which just inflates and makes your arms light. And when you're doing this, you'll find that if you start getting fatigue in your shoulders and go, oh, I'm starting to get tired, then that's a time to bring it down. Don't work through fatigue, because then you start building muscle contraction to support it. And we want to keep the shoulders and the arms and the body soft while you do this. This is not muscle tension, it's biotensecrity tension. So it's a loose elastic type of movement. Then look at a 10% threshold after you've mastered inflating the arms. If you did a, a 20 kilo uh, kettlebell on the power stretch, put one kilo in each hand, and then just float to, to one kilo um, uh, discs. And, uh, and then keep moving up. When you get to a peak that you can't power stretch more weight up there, stay there and let the bottom floating weight increase until it matches your power stretching weight. And, uh, I found for me uh, that took about one year to get that up there. Before I did this kettlebell experience, experiment, I had been doing a variation of that for one year in a gym, doing ballistic throwing exercises on a ballistic pulling machine. So what that one year did is it prepped my body and made it super strong and elastic before I even started the experiment. So um, with, with um, some people it may take much longer now, the generally accepted thing is to get a basic platform for biotensecrity elastic strength is three years. That your body is, is connected and strong. It's a three-year training program. Um, teaching people since 1986 and, and going through hundreds and hundreds of people following different types of strength training protocols, I found three years is a good number to take a beginner who comes in who's not very strong and make them really, really strong. So three years to build general strength uh, is, 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 a, is a good uh, time frame. What's most important here is that the upper threshold of what you power stretch on the load and then the lower threshold, make that as low as possible. So just float your arms. 
and don't put a weight on your arms if you can't float it. Uh, you want to just put a small amount extra float, small amount more float, small amount more float, and always stay within floating. It's, it's, it's this 10% of your, your, your loading weight is a very, very rough generalization. Um, and everyone is different. Some people will be able to float more. Some people just want to do their arms for a month or so before they even add the weight depth. This protocol works really well for activating biotensacrity. If you do Tai Chi, your Tai Chi is going to go through the roof because you don't need to use muscle to throw your body weight around. Now, this is a big thing. You touch someone, relax your body weight, and your body weight ripples through the wave and hits the person. They get a wave of mass smacking them, and you didn't use any muscle to do it. You just connected your body, boom, there's my body weight, crack, the person flies away. If you have good listening, big mental space, tuning the vital astral energy, you get a wonderful internal wave. If you're not doing that and you just throw your body weight, the, the weight is going to hit them, it's going to hurt them instead of making them bounce away. And the reason why it's going to hurt them is, well, your mass times acceleration is your force and you're putting the force right on the surface of the body where it hits them. That's more like a hammer going bang that way rather than sending the person for a bounce. What sends them for a bounce is your mind, your yi, stretching through them and sending them to where you want to go. So they lift up and have a harmonious experience rather than a percussive one. So even if you're not training with all the other internal listening principles and you just did this, you are going to get much, much stronger for it because this is a very safe, efficient way to activate the fascia, the biotensicrity of the body. And it's doing so in such a way that you're isolating muscle activation. People who get this the quickest are powerlifters. If you're doing Olympic powerlifting, heavy weightlifting, and you do this exercise, you'll be able to tune your mind to relaxing, dissolving muscle tension and floating the weight. And you get a really pure expression of biotensacrity power. This is a really exciting field to develop. If you develop it for a few years, Please make a uh, uh, document your, your results really, really well and make a course on it. Design a course based on those results. Make protocols for this. This is the future of sport. Every professional athlete knows if their, their fascia and, and, and tendons, ligaments, bitensecrity are stronger, they're going to perform better. The muscles are going to work more efficiently. This is really the future of sport. Look at it, develop it and uh, put it out there for people to evolve and grow. Thank you for your time, and uh, see you on the next video.